It is the concept that matters, liebe Irma. It is very difficult to invent something that is entirely new in the history of the world. I have done that. If my bridge, my waterfall, yields a crop of only perhaps ten people a year, it is simply a matter of statistics. The basic idea will be kept alive. That is so. You are indeed a genius, Lieber Ernst. You have already established this place as a shrine of death forevermore. People read about such fantasies in the works of Poe, Lautrermont, de Sade, but no one has ever created such a fantasy in real life. It is as if one of the great fairy tales has come to life, a sort of Disneyland of death. But of course, she hastened to add, on an altogether grander, more poetic scale. <laughs> Welcome to the James Bond Complex. My name is Matt. I'm Edgar. We are a James Bond podcast where we discuss the entire James Bond phenomenon from Fleming to the film and everything in between. Oh. Yes. Um, so today we are doing a book review, book discussion. Indeed. We are doing You Only Live Twice. We are indeed. It's an exciting episode. I've been very anxious to get to this book. At the same time, it's a little sad. This is book 12 out of the 14. And that include I, I say 14, that's with the short story collection. Yes. So this is 12 of 14, Matthew. And this is the last book Fleming finished also. Yeah, well, we'll get there when we get there. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, I know you haven't read the uh, the book, so I need to tell you everything that happens in You Only Live Twice. Yes, I need a very thorough and detailed synopsis. Yes. It's been eight months since the events of Honor Majesty's Secret Service. James Bond has lost a step. The death of his wife has left him broken. He has failed on his last two previous assignments. But after a good talk with Sir James Molony, a noted neurologist and good friend of him, it is decided that to wake up 007 from his current state, he must be given an impossible mission. The case is to be an odd one. Convince the head of Japanese Secret Service, Tiger Tanaka, to let the British have their brand new Magic 44 decoding machine. Teamed up with Dico Anderson, head of Station J, Bond is introduced to the Japanese culture and finally to Tiger himself. At first, Tanaka seems reluctant to offer the British their precious Magic 44, but Tiger realizes he can use Bond to have him assassinate Dr. Shatteran and his wife, a Gajan couple that created a little garden of death where over 500 Japanese people have been enticed to commit suicide. While studying the doctor's fortress, Please. he realizes that Chatteran and his wife are actually Ernst Avril Blofeld and Irma Bunt, 007's wife murderer. Bon is then trained as a ninja for the mission and instructed in Japanese custom by Tiger. He is left to the care of ama diver Casey Suzuki. While undercover, 007 takes the name of Taro Todoroki and finishes his training with Kissy before going to Blo Blofeld's retired home, the Castle of Death. After infiltrating the castle and witnessing two suicides, 007 falls into an oubliette and is taken captive and finally greeted by Blofeld. Quickly, Blofeld and Bont realize they are in the presence of their arch nemesis. And just as he's about to be decapitated by Blofeld, Bont overpowers the villain, kills him, sabotages the castle, and leaves the unconscious Bont to die. 007 escapes but is badly wounded. While recuperating, he's declared dead. Now, literally a new man and with a fragmented memory that seems lost to eternity, it seems like Taro Todo. Rocky will live the rest of his life with Kissy. But a Russian word seen on the newspaper, Vladivostok, reignites a memory in Bond's mind. He decides to leave Kissy and head to Russia. 007 is unaware that he, in fact, sired a child before his departure. And this is the end of You Only Live Twice. That was actually a really good uh, synopsis. I would have struggled... I don't know how much time that took you to do, but I would have struggled mightily if, if the onus had been on me to do the synopsis for the book. 
Uh, we'll get to some of the reasons why as we go along here, but that was really, really good. I, I'll be honest. I based most of my... I, I, I've recycled a lot of my synopsis from Dr. No. Spoilers. <laughs> Not that much, but... I I've, do like the part of his memory lost to... What was that line? His memory lost to eternity? Yes. That was a nice little touch there. Thank you. Yeah, well played, sir. So the, we'll, we'll start with the beginning because um, the book starts with a poem... Yes, it does. It does. Uh, you only live twice, once when you are born and once when you stare death in the face. Or look death in the face? Yeah. And th- twice is the only way to live. Well, yeah, we'll get that in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to plug it. Um, this was written right after Fleming's uh, first major heart attack. Um, he was rec- still recuperating. He, he made the trip to Japan, two-week trip where he took notes and uh, actually the two characters that he meets in the novel uh, that are in the local um, fauna, I guess, um, Dico Anderson and um, Tiger Tanaka are actually based on journalists that hung out cool. with Fleming. Um, nice. Um, I have their names. Uh, well, they're, they're dedicated. The book is dedicated to them. Richard Hughes and Tar- Toraro, Tro- Torao Seto. Um, oh yeah, my goodness! I, you know what? I'd never even noticed that page. Uh, Richard Hughes and Torao Saito, yeah, for whom, but for whom, etc. Interesting. It's in the version of the book I have as one. I never even noticed it. Yeah. So, uh, and Richard Hughes, um, uh, yeah, they were friends of Fleming, and uh, <laughs> yeah, um, let's just say that the, the, uh, Hughes, if he's like. Uh, Dicko Anderson. Richard Lovelace he Anderson? Had, yeah, he had an interesting um, life. <laughs> an interesting time there yeah. in, old, in old Japan. So, um, that interesting that, I find it interesting that, uh, thank you for that, for that information. I always rely on you. I know I can always count on you on those little tidbits. So this is the book he wrote after his first heart attack. So there's yes. this notion of recovery, getting back on one's feet. That's pretty much what James Bond has to experience in this book. It has to be uh, remade, reborn. Exactly, exactly. And the, there, you know, a lot of the early reviews uh, of the books that we did, we said, oh, it starts with such and such chapter. And then the next chapter is the flashback back in the office. This book s- sort of does that. The opening chapter, we're already in Japan. Mm-hmm. He's already with Tiger. They're playing rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> which is a really fun. I love that chapter so much because the Tiger of the book, we'll get to the version in the film, but the Tiger of the book is definitely a man of honor. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's modern, but also stereotypically traditional in that Japanese way. Uh, safe face, safe face, safe face. So James Bond is like, should I beat this guy at rock, paper, scissors, or should I let him beat me? I'm afraid. I need this man for information. If I defeat him, will I have insulted him so much that the deal is off? So what do I do here? It's such a bizarre way to start the book, but I don't know. It worked for me. I liked it. Uh, it's interesting. It sets up the character of Tiger. It's a little bit eccentric. Mm. Um, it's a little bit... Yeah, he, there's uh, no. I think that later on the the story you find out that he's actually a, a former uh, kamikaze pilot. Yeah. Man, that's. I mean, we'll get there when we get there. But man, that is an interesting chapter. He just his kamikaze. For those of you that don't know what the kamikaze were, although it's a, it's still a word used today, it's your suicide mission. Yeah, you're going to kill as many. You're going to take as many people down with you as you die. Uh, so they were the, the fighter jets for the Japanese back in World War II. And just the, f- frankly, the romanticism with which Tiger describes that. Yeah. Describing, yes, I would have loved to have died and sink a cruiser with me. <laughs> but he explains it. It's like, yeah, that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's quite quite fascinating. But that's, that's what I appreciate about Fleming's writing, um, the travelogue aspect. But since the book is over 50 years now, there's also like uh, giant travel aspect because you're seeing something, uh, a version of Japan that obviously it doesn't exist anymore. No, it's certainly a version of Japan. Um, post-World War II. Post-World II, but fresh post-World War yeah. II. In fact, there is a passage in the book 
a lot of interesting passages in this book where Tiger, unfortunately, and he excuses himself for that, he lets off some steam, so to speak, in sort of that very uh, serious, not too ostentatious way, but nevertheless, he does start mouthing off a little bit about, you know, well, this is what we have to go when you're the defeated country and these, you know, dishonorable, you know, neon signs and these dishonorable uh, Western ways that have infiltrated Japan. And then he goes like, whoa, whoa. sorry, sorry, you're right, you know, Bundo san you know, I'm, I'm letting off some steam here. But again, World War II has, came to an end Two decades ago, if that, by the time this story happens? Yeah. If two decades ago? When was this released? It's uh, first published in 1964, a good show. So, yeah, Japan is defeated literally 20 years earlier. Yeah. And, of course, we have a character who was going to be a kamikaze pilot. So this is very fresh in, in his mind. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's a very astute point you made there. It's a version of, of Japan that not only has it... Not only has it changed much since then, although most of the places we visit in these books have changed a lot since the time they were written anyways, but in the case of Japan, because of what happened barely 20 years ago and we're with the character that lived it on the enemy side, no less, <laughs> it makes it really interesting to read at times. So. Yeah, it's uh, quite uh, fascinating. And we skip to uh, the next section is um, you know, the chapter is curtains for, for Bond. And it's the the, the diagnosis of mm, Bond. He, um, pretty much, yeah. We're, has, are we at Blades? I can't remember if we're at Blades. No, I think we're at the office. Oh, we're at the office. I'm okay, pretty sorry. sure it's the, it's the office. Yeah, because they sent uh, Bond over after they made their mm. their, their, their decision. Um, so neurosis, it's an, it's an outdated term. They don't use that term anymore. Uh, it's a class of Functional mental disorder involving chronic distress, but neither delusion or nor hallucination. The term blah blah, blah it basically, from what I, I I understood because I Google, and it's it's someone that's uh, repeating the same pattern. You're you're unable to shake once mm. yourself from okay. the pattern. So, and honestly, I I before reading the book, I'm like, when I read that passage, it says that there's no hallucination, but I'm like. I read, spoiler, <laughs> Shat, Dr. Shatton that Bond is sent to kill is Blofeld. I'm like, is he really Blofeld? Is Bond batshit? And the, he, they mentioned that he missed missed two pre previous mission. Um, and maybe he's trying to like, Find Blofeld. Because of the description. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm not critiquing here. I'm I, just trying to get a hold I, of what, what's going on here. I so was... I was trying to see if one an, interpre an, an interpretation of this book could be that James Bond lost it and is mm. repeating the same pattern of, oh, it's Blofeld, I have to kill him. And that's what has been messing his two previous mission. and Because it's awfully convenient that, uh, it, that Blofeld is the man that Bond is sent to kill. That is probably the single most important argument that would be in favor of that theory. Yes. Uh, a theory that I, I never would have thought of. Theory um, I made, uh, like I was trying to f entertain myself. I love those types of uh, stories. It's like the Telltale Art uh, from Edgar mm -hmm. Allan Poe, which mm -hmm. when you read it, he always uh, speaks about an evil eye. Oh, I'm going to kill him because he has an evil eye, blah, blah, blah. And, Either he hears the heartbeat of the, and he's hallucinating that he, um, he, he the, the guilt that he feels in that short story makes him hallucinate that he hears the heartbeat of, the, of his victim. But one reading was that when he says evil eye, he's talking about is uh, some something that part of himself that he tried to kill the guy is so crazy he's trying to. Hmm. Exorcism, ex exercise is evil. A lot sight. of the characters in those Poe stories were a little bit off the rocker sometimes. The I, Raven and you know. Yeah, I know. That, that's why I'm like, maybe that's an interpretation. After reading it, I don't think that 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 theory has much weight to it. But I was trying as maybe the maybe James Bond is crazy. At the end of the story, like so it's, he, it's a it's a very detailed hallucination because basically Doctor Shatterhand and and I don't remember if the wife ever has a Japanese name or a uh, Japanese name. I'll just call name. her the wife. The wife, you know, they both go like, "Well, I'm Blofeld, I'm Irma Bund." So it's like that's a very yeah, detailed hallucination. I, I, I don't think, but I I was hoping coming back to it, 
it could be interpreted this way and i don't think mm. it's meant for that i don't think that that was the author's inter- intention at all but i thought it could have been an interesting take on the material mm. but it doesn't work food for thought but yeah. maybe it doesn't hold enough water no it no. doesn't um so he's uh yeah he's they decide to give him this mission which i mean it It's called an impossible mission, but it's not because like it's not one of a tough assignment in theory. Yeah, I mean the mission itself basically consists of extra extract negotiating information out of the Japanese Secret Service. I mean, the, the, basically the geopolitical setup here is that it's the Americans in reality that have I should, the jurisdiction is not the right word, but the Americans are the ones that have the connections in Japan, the Far East. Uh, as far as intelligence and counterintelligence concerns, whereas the British, you know, they're a little bit more, well, obviously the whole Hong Kong thing, they're more in China, uh, less so in Japan. So they're going to try to, I guess that's what's supposed to make it so difficult. The British just have no bond, the bonds. <laughs> they have no links. They have no, they have no bridges in Japan as far as intelligence is concerned. So yeah, Bond, you try to get intelligence that'll help us. Yeah, I know, it's, is that impossible? Well, well, it gets information out of Tiger fairly easy. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how impossible that was. And it's like, he gets the information out of Tiger, despite the olive branch being something that Tiger already has, the, 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 the blue root, the Macau root. Uh, and the Tiger's like, well... That would have been interesting a couple months ago, but we already we're already on top of that. He still gets the information they need out of Tiger, so it's like, well, how impossible was that? Really, yeah. I, I guess I guess impossible because they think uh, Bond he's so uh, devastated and 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 emotionally uh, tarnished after Ma- what happened in Majesties that wow you got you have to have. Uh, face in front of Tiger and you're going to have to be very cultivated and you're going to have to adopt yourself to the Japanese lifestyle, so to speak. And like, he's a wreck. This is never going to work. Like I'm sort of with you and your hallucination argument. Uh-huh. I'm trying to come up with an argument as to well, what makes this so impo- difficult. Absolutely. Especially if the British have no espionage ties. Sure. Difficult. Really? Possible. I don't know. <laughs> it didn't take that long to get the information. No, but Yeah, just so weren't. <laughs> so uh, he gets a mission. At first, he he thinks he's gonna get fired, and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna resign." Mm. But they offer him like kind of like a promotion, I guess, because he, he's made. He's no longer a double oh seven. He's seven seven seven. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't understand. What it means. <laughs> no idea why they do that, but it doesn't stick because I think he's back to double oh seven. But but the next book. Uh, um, mm. So he's given the mission. Um, I oh. do like the little passage where he's in Regent's. I keep saying Regent's Park because it's the only one I know. Maybe it's not Regent's Park, but uh, where he's in the park, not too far from the office. And, you know, we do get a little bit of insight about, about how the last eight months have been. You know, there's this beeper that they're always supposed to have on them. And, and Mary Goodnight is like, damn, you know, the, the, the boss wants you and he doesn't have his, you don't have your beeper with you anymore. And she's distraught. Like her, his tarnished. Uh, habits uh, are stressing her the the the, the shit out. <laughs> uh, and he doesn't care about showing up late for the meeting. So th- th- this is definitely a changed man, a a a wounded bird, so to speak. Yeah, he's a um, shadow of his former self. Absolutely. He's, uh broken, and he's he seems to be. And he's a, there's a passage you might even where say he's shattered. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. There's a passage where they say that yeah they they try like one of the doctors that that saw him say yeah I just need to 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 screw some ladies and you're gonna feel fine and yeah it's not working he's no. trying to he said he he said he's tried it yeah which I thought was a little so like your wife died a few months ago but he's I I who it's James Bond man so yeah. are you are you completely surprised yeah James maybe Bond. I shouldn't have been that surprised maybe I'm a, maybe I'm more of a prude than I thought I <laughs> my wife died eight months ago I'm not sure if I would have spent the last eight months screwing around but anyways. I, Besides, he, he's drinking. He's doing like he's not healthy. He's the worst, not the worst shape. I think he was uh, in, in a worse shape at the beginning of uh, Thunderball, but he's not. Mm. He's not feeling particularly mm. good, and he, he he needs a reset. He mm. needs uh, he he needs help, and it's not working. So he's sent to Japan, and he meets a funny character that um, that Deco Anderson. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I love his full name, though. I love the name of Richard Lovelace Henderson. Oh, there's something about that name that just rolls off the tongue. I think it's the Lovelace part. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I love Dick. Dick I, I, it's, it's, it's funny. Dick Henderson. Mm. Some, some, something f- it's funny about the name. He's um, a bit of a dick. He's a bit of a dick. He's a... He's a like an alcoholic a of, brash a brash and you know i don't want to bring the, uh, the 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 movie version but he reminds me of a drunken crocodile dundee <laughs> like the australian that's yes because he is from australia yeah. he is from us yes because his contacts are in melbourne yeah yeah yeah, yeah so that's yeah. who i'm trying to picture as dick Anderson, like a drunken yeah um, oh it's, i love the part in the book where uh they're at a bar, and and Dicko is is relating how sort of the Japanese behave, and you know, oh yeah, they're pretending to be demorokasu, which is like a cheap Japanese version of the word democracy. Apparently, it's not. I actually googled demokarasu in Google, and it was just a bunch of you only live twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and and uh, so Dicko sort of stops himself for a brief moment, like ah, you know, I think I'm getting a little bit tight here, mate. You know, and, and Bond is like, no, no, keep drinking, keep drinking, because Bond is like, well. The more he loosens up, the more I'm going to learn about this place in Tiger. I kind of like that little strategy. No, 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 it's all right, Ma. I'll buy you another round. Just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's in, he's entertaining. He's uh, they he, Bond and him go to like I think they go to a brothel at some point. Mm, mm. And yeah, like, well, Bond, Bond lives in brothels a couple of times because he goes to one with Tiger later on. Dicko's not there anymore. Yeah, but I, yeah, I think you're right. I'm pretty sure they go to a brothel. Uh, they, 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 it's, it's, uh, there's something a little bit nasty about the, 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 the all the things they do. They do uh, in that book. They they get drunk. They, they and I'm like, this is clearly travel log. So I'm like, how much did screwing around did Fleming do in his in his mm-hmm. fifty what fifties? Mm-hmm. Oh wow, man. That, that, <laughs> So, so I'm like, this is probably first hand experience. He was an active, uh, an active man. Yeah, he had to uh, release, release. Mm, it releases the tension. Uh, uh, <laughs> I I don't know. We have no way of proving, but it's just the impression because some of the, the the description, like there's um, one point. Uh, I think it's with Tiger when he brings him to a brothel, and it's the oldest whorehouse in all of Japan. Yes, it's like almost like he's. Uh, like a national monument or something? Yeah, but it's it's almost like, and Bond finds it very strange. He almost thinks it's like too clean or like there aren't enough rooms. Like why are there not more places to screw around? But it's one of the reasons is because they're trying to keep it the way it was for all these years. Because it's also, I think Tiger, again, some of the details get a little bit a little bit hazy when it's very, very travelogy, which this book is. But Tiger says something like, well, it's more than just a brothel. Like you People come here to write haikus, and they come here to have tea and this and that. So it's it's not you don't just come here to for for a quick uh, corkscrew, you know. You come here for uh, some of the other finer things in life, you know. Which again, I guess it's a little bit of that window into at least what Japan was back then. I don't know. Never been to Japan. Like to, so I don't know if it's still the brothels are still like that now. Do you go there to do haikus? I don't know. It's like, <laughs> I don't know if they still have uh, brothels. There's one th- a little detail uh, when Tiger and Bond discuss uh, Magic Forty Four. Um, Tiger takes out a, a, like a report that mm. more or less explains the, like Russian plans to. Like, yes, there's a. Oh, by the way, they they go into an underground kind of like in the movie. Although yeah. it's like an actual office. It looks like a, they actually they've carved an office into this disused. Uh, underground train station or whatever. I think, I think they're building the subway. Oh, the, uh, right. They're, yes, they're building it and Tiger, because he has all the connections he needs, he sort of like loaned it for a little or leased it for, for a while. Um, and yes, yeah, so he takes out this report. I love it in the Fleming books when the uh, la, 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 la police, the, the typo like changes because it's like it's a document of yeah. some sort. I like that. So we read this document which has been intercepted by the Japanese Secret Service and it relates that the Russians are about to test these 200 megaton, I might be getting the numbers wrong, but there's two, 200 something, 2 there's, billion megaton. There's massive bombs. Yes, a massive bomb. They have two of them and they're, they're going to start uh, testing them and they're going to do this with the intent of riling up some Western powers to, to cause tension or something. It's, it's a little convoluted. It's not really the point of the story either, although yes, technically speaking, this is the information James Bond was hoping to extract. But we sort of forget the details pretty quickly. 
Uh, As in regards to the dates, because I Google the date, and I think I, I think I'm, I'm now perfect, almost certain that the most of the uh, the books don't take place on the day uh, on the the year they're published. I think the story takes place in 1961, because there was one, like he says that the, the there was a uh, test. The first uh, test was on September 20th, I think, and there was a. Uh, Joe 91, and it was uh, a rocket that was, it's a, some detonation, and the, 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 the location, I think, fits, I googled this stuff, so I think this story takes place in 1961. And he mentioned Kennedy, and I don't know, when did Kennedy get shot? Is it 64? 63, I thought. And this, so, so this was uh, published after uh, Kennedy was uh, assassinated, mm. so, and he's mentioned that he gave. I think it, honestly, like I think the most arousing speech of his political career, or something like that. It's like, probably the Cuban um, uh, missile, probably, missile. but I do like the fact that it's. I don't know. There's something about about the fact that I I, I like that it was reappropriated for this like test this missile not missile bomb testing. So basically, the Russians again. The book never really spends that much time on it, but. The Russians get what they want, sort of, although because James Bond has successfully extracted this information from the Japanese Secret Service, like the British, I guess they knew what was coming, so they they, like, they protect the Russians that are living in London and stuff. There's some sort of a description about, oh, well, perimeters with soldiers and guards were put around the Russian consulates and stuff like that, because they obviously knew it was going to happen, because James Bond sort of succeeded in his mission. Yeah, kind, yeah, kind of. of. Partially. Um, Partially, but uh, the the mission is is not over because this is this is tit for you scratch your back and I'll scratch yours. Now Tiger's done some scratching, okay, but he has an itch. He has a major hitch. Itch, and it's turning into a rash <laughs> in some very discomforting areas. Yeah, it's like he had some contact with uh, poison ivy, or you might say that some, some poisonous plants. Uh, yeah, and this is where we introduced more or less to uh, the notion. The, the collector idea. of death. That's a cool name. I love it. Frankly, that could have been... I love the title, You Only Live Twice. It could have been The Death Collector. <laughs> I would have been fine with that. It, honestly, <laughs> the, the there's some chapter titles that they could and should use as film titles i mean milk milk those books absolutely as much as you can there's still stuff we discussed you know, it bonus episode idea okay mm -hmm. maybe sometime down the road mind you but i completely i completely agree with your sentiment i think it'd be awesome if we took that sentiment went through not reread the whole books but took all the the, the book titles what are those that are left chapter titles and say <laughs> no i'm serious man i'm serious what's a good bond movie title yeah because the death collector i'm down with that oh, that that's a great one but i'm thinking there, there's one in kiss noel that always amuses me la vie en rose <laughs> yeah. i'm like that's not a title don't bond think movie. we're getting a bond movie with that title yet or may, maybe it'll be the for the one for france you know oh, we'll get the, yes. that'll be the one they'll get and belgium and, and haiti and this and that um so but, yeah, this is this is where uh Gontram Shatterhand and oh Frau Amy Shatterhand. Amy Shatter. So Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Shatterhand. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny is that uh, Blofeld have had these identity placed created months, yeah. years in advance. Like that takes some planning. He is a master he is an evil genius. Because he has his basic I am Ernst Tavro Blofeld, which he still uh, used personally uh, uh, in Turner Ball. He doesn't need, because he hasn't been found out, he hasn't been exposed as a master criminal. So after Turner Ball, he sleeps into the identity of the Comte de Bleuchon, mm. which he must have had created years before. And after this entire debacle, which he, he had planned, contingency plans for, uh, he slips into the identity of Dr. Shatterhand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's eight months. In eight, eight months he had... But I think the Castle of Death was planned years before because it, it, it seems to be pretty popular. And it's... Uh, or, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they created uh, maybe a few months uh, or a month after Thunderball. 
We could have, I mean, for all we know, it's being built as we're reading Majesties, they're building this castle. Maybe maybe as we're reading Thunderball, they're building the castle. We don't know. But it goes back to that passage in Thunderball, uh, the, the chapter that relates uh, Blofeld's backstory and you know, what he did with his birth certificate and going back to the church or whatever. Yeah. With his, like, I, I actually, uh, I went back in my mind to that uh, chapter in, in Thunderball uh, when Bond sort of deduces that, like, man, this guy must have prepared for these contingency plans ages ago. And the minute he said that, I thought about that chapter in Thunderball. Like, yeah, Bullfeld has been working on all these things for years already. His contingencies have contingencies. That's, yeah, no, absolutely. His plan Bs have plan Cs, and the plan Cs have plan Ds, and so on and so forth. <laughs> it takes some planning. And the plan Zs have plan A ones and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> But um, the the castle of that the uh, the garden that he built like at, at first the Japanese were like oh that's gonna be cool you're gonna be all these exciting plants and mm. animals and yes. and he, people are going there to kill themselves yeah so essentially what happens and Tiger's the one that relates all of this information is the fact that uh, some months ago this Mister and Missus Shatterhand show up in Japan uh, with lots of money. Uh, some knowledge about uh, botany and, and, and not agriculture, but botany, let's say. And they sort of woo uh, the Japanese authorities, like the agricultural ministry and this and that. And they basically have carte blanche, so to speak, um, to purchase this land, which I think south, uh, southern Japan, a small little island in, in a very relatively remote area where there are people but they're you know just a bunch of fisher we'll get to those people yes. soon enough but yeah it doesn't sound like it's an area where a whole lot of people are going to pay attention to what happens and so over the past few months they get this this garden where they start importing these um rare species of, of poisonous plants from across the world speaking of speaking of like different texts when Fleming inserts new material uh, I will admit I did not read the four and a half pages with the plant <laughs> descriptions. I read like four or five of them. Okay, vomit, dizziness, hysteria, exfoliation, vomiting, hysteria. Okay, fine, I got it, I got it. When does this end? Okay, ten pages later. Okay, good, we're good. <laughs> you know, I was listening to the audiobook version, so I had to listen to all of those. All right, fast forward. Then it gets puts you to sleep. So hmm. timer two minutes. I mean, it's awesome that it's there if you want to read that stuff. I mean, I read, I like I said, I read four or five of them. I got the point. These are nasty plants. Don't breathe the air around them and don't touch them. <laughs> Otherwise, you will vomit. You will hallucinate. You will have an inflated face and you won't be able to breathe. You, you, and you want to toss yourself in a lake with piranhas. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, it, it echoed to me, well, not to me, but... It reminded me of the. Uh, I'm gonna mess up the spelling, so you'll have to endure. Oh. Um, it's reminded me of the Aokigahara Forest, the suicide forest, uh, that is near. If I understood correctly, my um, Japanese documentary I saw. I think it's near Mount Fuji, and people go there to like die, and they hang themselves, and it's so. I think that appears in in one of the James Bond comics that they published. Yes, it recently. does. Yeah, yeah. You can st like you go there and you can find people that they that they have like uh, messages. Oh, your family misses loves you. Uh, there's always a, like they have messages to convince people not to kill themselves. But people, if you mm. go there, you can there. There's dozens of corpses or probably more. You, people find dead bodies all the time. Mm. It's very morbid. Yeah, I would certainly not want to set foot in in that. No, uh, so that's what it, it reminded me of. So I must, I assume, I assume Fleming probably knew about this mm. uh, uh, this forest because it really sounds like the um, pretty much the same thing. It also all ties into uh, this whole notion of of the Japanese. Again, you know, this is a book written by a non Japanese. It also takes place in Japan like fifty years ago. <laughs> uh, but, you know, this notion of, of um, these very, um, well, certainly non-Western ways of viewing death and viewing why someone would die, the circumstances in which it's actually okay to kill yourself. And at least in this version of Japan, there's 
<laughs> a few reasons why it's not so bad to kill yourself. There's a lot of, like, there, the imagery of death is strong in this book. There's a lot of mention of death. There, the Japanese are obsessed with honorable death, and Bond is dealing, grieving. Yeah. Well, again, wife. the poem, you, you only live twice, once when you are born and once when you look death in the face. It, and, so, and now we have this death collector, this Dr. Shatterhand, which is essentially, um, I guess, in some in some shape or in a very morbid way, providing a service to the Japanese. Because yeah. uh, I think even Bond sort of semi-seriously alludes to the fact, well, you're going to have less corpses to, to, to scrape off the, the streets and the train tracks. You know, why don't you just send them over to this island? But if, but Tiger does actually have, he does have a reason to to send Bond there. He, he himself has sent one of his own to investigate and, uh, well... He's, um, they when, find him, he's burnt and he's uh, babbling. They, he's still alive when they find him. He's babbling nonsense about the pink uh, uh, butterfly mm, mm. or and he eventually expires uh, but yeah T- Tiger obviously wants some retribution and it happens that if Bond kills him or it is caught or whatever happens to Bond he has plausible de- deniability so he, yeah. he's the perfect tool for him uh, and, and this is how Bond will, re- will repay Tiger for a magic 44 yeah and um, but before he can be uh, uh, sent uh, to to do his mission, he has to actually become another man and become Japanese. Exactly, Bondo San. But it's it's an interesting part. Of, like I I had fun reading mm. Bond being described as becoming like a, there's a a point where he says, "Oh, I feel like a new man," and mm. you feel that he's actually enjoying the yeah he he certainly finds it he he finds the whole japanese culture a little bit weird at first weird for him because he's never been there he's very much a westerner so he finds it a little bit curious at first but yeah as the chapters go as we go through these chapters he's he's growing much more accustomed to to how these people behave and some of their their ideas about food and and whores really some of their ideas about whores and food and and sometimes it's sometimes it's the simple things like when Tiger brings Bond to this farm and he asks him to like spit uh, gin I think on the cow yeah. and then massage the cow which is an actual uh, the Kobe the Kobe steaks like Kobe, they actually Kobe beef. do that stuff um uh and and so and, and you know at the end of that little passage you know they're all sort of laughing about it but nah, that's true it's not really that important in the grander scheme of things but it, they do that the, the Kobe beef is a thing. <laughs> it's, it's the travelogue aspect of the book. You mm. you can either love it or hate it. I, 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 but all all of Fleming's literature is like that. This but, one, I feel this one is... I know we've used the word travelogue in some of our previous book reviews. Uh, I think uh, Live and Let Die comes to mind. I'm pretty sure we, we harp, harped on that yes. one quite a bit. I think this one is like ranked number one. And it's oh, not yeah. a criticism. It's just sort of the tone it's, it's and the fact. rhythm. No, this is number one as far as travel logginess. Fleming's brother, Peter, was actually like a, a travel writer. So I guess I wouldn't like, I'm honestly, I'd be curious to know how much they, they, these two discuss their writing because it seems like they're, they're both journalists and. They, they, mm. they have to describe uh, stuff that's happening around them. So I, I'd, I'd be curious to know if they've ever, like, how do, you, how, how do you describe this? Or have you ever been there? Oh, that's an interesting location. You should uh, write about it. Oh, yeah, I used it in my... I'm, I, I'd be curious to know if they discussed any of this uh, uh, between the two of them. I tend to forget that his brother was also sort of in that line of business as Actually, well. Actually, uh, before Fleming wrote the Bond mo- books, he was more well-known than Fleming, Ian <laughs> Fleming. Hmm. So they see the uh, opposite, but at the time. Hmm. But yeah, w- one of the things I noticed, and, and frankly, I noticed it as I was reading the book a few days ago, was it's so, it's so travelogging that I would sometimes stop myself and say, Wait, what happened in the previous chapter? Was it was that the previous chapter or was that five chapters ago? Kind of like when you're on a vacation, all the days you're having a fun time. Like what what was Friday? What was Sunday? I don't know. <laughs> it, it, honestly, it gets confusing. Like, there's a 
things that repeat themselves, like going to a whorehouse. Another one. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I, but yeah, um, the drinking. Geisha services, please, Matthew. Yeah, Geisha, Geisha Incorporated. <laughs> uh, oh, the train. Yes, his school, his ninja school. The ninja school is Which interesting. Which is serious, man. This is serious business. Oh, man, there are a couple. Okay, there's one tragic thing about the ninja school chapter, and there's one like, what? <laughs> thing about the travel school. I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going with this. They... Um, Tiger uh, makes a handful of his men uh, do a demonstration of, of wall climbing or rock wall climbing. And most of them make it except one who tumbles uh, into, into the water. Yeah, but doesn't make it. Yeah. So this, you know, this is more than just an exercise. You are playing with your life in, in this exercise, which, which I understand. You know, when you're in the military, you are playing with your life when you're in these exercises. But this was like, you guys, make a demonstration, and one of them dies. It's like, wow, this Oops. is like, we're not joking around here. And then comes another demonstration where they, the soldiers, the ninjas, hit each other. And sometimes they take aim in some where the crown jewels are. Or are they? That's something that I read before, but I think it's BS. I'm pretty sure it's, it's impossible. The, retact, the retractable Retract. testicles? Yeah. I don't think that's possible. I, I I think it's 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 one of those myths about ninjas, like him, them being able to have, so mythical, you know. have special shoes that allows them to run over water. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's, and it's it's part of their mind games, uh, the, the, the scare tactics. Transform like, yourself into a eunuch. Yeah. You're like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> could be useful. I mean, like, I'm not kidding. I switch, you know, the other guy's going to fight dirty. It's like, Just give me two seconds. <laughs> and you sort of make that face like when you're like, taking a dump, like that. Uh, <laughs> okay. And, and you, you can hear like a. <laughs> so we're alluding to the fact that, um, according to Fleming in the book, um, um, ninjas are able to retract because the. Sumos, I think, are supposed to supposedly do it as well. Yeah. Don't they say something like that? Yes, they, they say, do. yeah. I, honestly, I didn't Google. I should have, but I, I should have looked into Of all it. the things you researched, yeah. you didn't research... The... Retractable <laughs> testicles in man. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm sorry. But it seems far-fetched. Yeah. And the way they describe that, they bind the, the stomach to like force the, the muscles. I'm like, oh, okay, that seems odd. And bond... I, I can't... You know, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact dialogue, but but... Bond sort of says, you mean they do such and such? And Tiger's like, well, it's a bit of a crude description, but yes, that's what they do. I'm like, hey, crude description. That's what they're doing, man. <laughs> we don't need to know the full anatomy of what's going on there. It's fine. Bond, unfortunately, uh, as Tiger informs James Bond, is a little too old. It's pretty, apparently, it's a practice you have to start when you're very young. And James is a little too old to and be able to uh, retract his uh, cojones. <laughs> cojones. Uh, it's probably too big also. Like... <laughs> They won't fit in my stomach. He has two like massive like <laughs> lumps on his stomach. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, we finally um, are introduced to Kisi Suzuki. We are. We are. So basically, uh, you know, we, we go to the geisha house. We go to the training ground. We 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 eat some Kobe beef, and then finally we go to the, the I don't the Ama people. I can't remember if the village is Ama or not, but they're the Ama people, the, the people of the Aba, sea, Ama tribe. Yeah, the the people of the water. Yes, uh, they're, they they're, still exist today. I've heard that too. Actually, yeah, I googled. Uh, they're a little. They're a little. You know, they're sort of in their own little world there. Uh, let it be known, though. Don't Google Ama people. Um, 1950s uh, or at work because I saw so much like bare-chested ladies. Um, you, you you don't want us to Google yeah, that. Yeah, it's not safe for work. You, oh, well, and, come and on. As, uh, We're adults and we know when to do that. Yeah, no, I know. Just letting people know. We, we meet uh, Kisi Suzuki and her family. Um, Bon is sent to live with her. And that's... Uh, yeah, you don't want to bring the movie in, but... Hmm. We do it, and we keep saying we're never going to do it, and we always do it. We, we oh. do, it's normal that it sneaks in, but she's a more complete character, an actual character, because she's not named by name in the entire movie, no. and our, our backstory is completely excised from that. That she's a former uh, actress, well, actress, she's uh, she spent like a year in Hollywood, but she's a former Hollywood starlet. Yes. Yeah, she speaks for fairly per, per, perfect English. She had a little bit of money. From experience, mm. and she was able to build a more 
a comfortable yeah. home for parents and herself. Yeah. Um, so she bon, bon is sent to live with her. Uh, I think w she has a family that it's uh, yeah, an agent of. Uh, she, she has some relation with Tiger Tanaka. Um, uh, Tiger is a friend of the family. I think the yeah. Tiger is a friend of the parents. And because of that, has some connections with the priest. I can't remember what the Japanese term of it was. Because they sort of, they have to speak to the priest, uh, you know, once and for all to get the deal done to allow this outsider, this Gaijin, uh, to actually spend time there. Because that's already like, weird enough. Like, what's this white dude doing here? So they have to talk to the priest about it. And he says, okay, fine, I get it. You know, for, he, he may stay for the, as I, as I seem to recall, he may stay for the minimal required time to accomplish mm -hmm. his mission. So even then, it's like, yes, you can, but... You know, get out of here as soon as you can. So there's, they're a little closed off. But uh, but Kissy, which is an awesome name. <laughs> I love the name Kissy Suzuki. Uh, like you were saying more, further to your point, uh, she's fun. Mm -hmm. I, I like the Kissy Suzuki in this book. She's uh, She doesn't have the uh, gravitas and drama of a Tracy. Or she she's not as... She's uh, a little more... In I mean, she's seen the world because she was in Hollywood of all places. Uh, so, it's, so I don't want to say she's more naive than Tracy. She is, I guess, still a little more naive than Tracy. But um, she's uh, there is a sophistication about her. She's yeah. playful. Uh, she likes her job. She likes fishing. <laughs> uh, you know, there's redneck and there's... Uh my dad would call would say a cultivator like a per, like a per, like a, far, a farmer but like you can have redneck and farmer a farmer it doesn't mean that your farmer actually goes to the city to sell the stuff so they, the stuff, they see other need, things you need to know what you're doing you need to know when to plant the seeds you need to be and it's a lot more complex and a redneck is just somebody learning. who's gonna Drink us beer, uh, maybe a uh, haunted year, and mm -hmm. blah, 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 like rain. The farmer actually has to know some things and educate themselves a little bit. Exactly. So she's a little bit more uh, educated. She, uh, she she went to Hollywood. She made some money. She came back. She didn't like it. And um, I love the fact that her best, her her only good memory of Hollywood is David Niven. Yeah, <laughs> that's the name she gives to her own uh, uh, karma. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I would have not remembered what the name of that bird is, but uh, it. I, I googled it the rare time. I, I it, it. It's sort of like a larger duck. Yeah, it's a yeah. big bird. Yeah. Um, I, I, th I thought I thought the entire introduction of that um, character. I don't know if we, or sort of like Fleming it's, it's does a, give the bird a little bit of character, a little bit of spunk. You yeah, know? it's a funny, funny notion that he. he he gets, he helps fishing. He does. And in fact, on the first time they go out fishing, uh, David uh, comes up with a fish, tries to give it to Bon and Bon, like drops it. And Fleming describes David's look as though he's like angry. Like he does give David a little bit of personality. I mm -hmm. thought that was kind of cute. I was like, yeah, I'm okay with this. I'm fine with this, you know. No, yeah, not so. Um Oh, that gives me an idea. I'll discuss it. Uh, the Birds of Bond? No, no, no. An idea for a spinoff. Um, uh, uh, Bond Expansion Volume 2. With with Kisi, he trains for the swim because they have to swim yeah. to uh, the castle. And it's a pretty... Right? And she, 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 uh, she trains him a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, when he wakes up the following, he's completely he's sore. He's yeah. tired, exhausted. And she's like, oh, I trained you too hard. And eventually, um, like they, they have a connection. There's a connection between. I don't think they kiss. Uh, no, no, uh, they don't. Um, the, the connection is interesting. Uh, she she definitely digs him, but again, in sort of that very, you know, stereotypical reserved Japanese way. But it's all. But it's clear that she fancies him. I think we can say. And the description of how Bond feels about Kissy is interesting. He's like, he he is charmed by her, but not in some sort of heightened sexual. I mean, he, he he. I mean, her description. She's obviously a beautiful woman, and and Bond admits that she's a beautiful woman. But he's he he's won over by her habits. I can't remember. I wish I had quoted. I like highlighted the passage. But there's a passage where he says. You know, he she's won him over, but not because she's like a total babe. More because like, well, she's just like 
this woman's like really charming and I really like her like cute little habits and like her There's, her smile and you know oh she likes this praying thing and like this is like really nice and she's really sweet <laughs> which is nice like, you don't but Bond this, doesn't react like that very often. It's often like, I'm going to screw her or I'm going to marry her. That's basically what happened yeah. in these books. Whereas this was like, oh, she's really nice. But she's not <laughs> his usual broken dove type. Usually they're broken. They have some broken nose. Uh, they had... Uh, <laughs> and they're physically or emotionally broken. Yeah. And she's okay. She's like, yeah, and I'm okay. Um, she's not... I, I don't want to say complex, but she's not... Uh, N- neurotic mm, yeah and she's not she's already angry at the yeah. world she's she's comfortable in her own skin and uh i mean sh- she's actually made a life choice decision that she's she's more than happy with yeah she's not a rape victim she's not yep. uh she, she didn't have yeah no see it's, didn't it's, lose a child uh didn't lose her family yeah no she's perfectly okay she's living the state is not threatening to kill her if she doesn't do this mission (laughs) she's perhaps the most uh blue collar i guess of the bomb girl she's she's sexy she's refined in her own way but she's not uh uh, the contest a contest she's not a a las vegas um card hustler card hustler she's not a police woman she's just a fisher woman like she's just yeah. she's, she's, there's some there's That's probably a, why she's pretty fit as well <laughs> yeah uh, she swims every day so yeah. that, that uh, gets you in shape so uh they finally uh, decide but well, bond decides to at first he's not there to assassinate uh, uh blofeld he's just there to kind of get a way of the like by the way he is not revealed to tiger and his associates that he knows it's is fulfilled because he doesn't want to compromise the mission in any way. But he has now ordained himself with the mission of finally, at long last, after three harrowing adventures, this being the third, to finally be done with this guy. And Bunt. Yeah. Kill him. This is his own little, own little personal vendetta while helping Tiger. <laughs> yeah. So, hey. Win-win. Two. Two birds with one stone. Exactly. Vengeance. And I get the magic 45. Precisely. Uh, 44. Precisely. Uh, so uh, he does, so he gets his gear on. He uh, he's, he's just there to like get his way around the, the castle at first. He's like, I'm not going to, I'm going to come back to kill him. But I don't remember what, I think, I, I think he has a hiding spot that almost gets found out. He almost gets found out and says, okay, I need to do it now. I have, I have to take care of it. Now, mm. so uh, he, uh, he, he sees some people, like you said previously, that uh, are killing themselves. There was, there was a motorcyclist that was following them before they got to the fishing village. So they know that somehow Dr. Shatterhand knows they're on to him. Yeah. And I feel there's a passage where people came to the village to say, like, hey, didn't, like, this Gajin come here and somebody from the state? And they're like, yeah, but they left, they left. And so, yeah, you're right. He, they, somehow, some way, they're onto them, onto Bond, although they don't know it's James Bond necessarily, but they, they know, know there's a white dude, like, you know, I mean, the only Japanese around. people here, so it's like, he's probably easy to see. <laughs> Somebody's so, lurking around. Yeah. Um, so he finally uh, arrives. He sees uh, people committing suicide. He- really grotesque, too. There's this poor bastard. His face is inflated. He's like mumbling mumbo jumbo. <laughs> and he just tosses himself into a lake with piranhas, which, I mean, when you're at that stage, I guess. It's a relief. Yeah, pretty much. He he gets inside the castle and he falls into a trap, an oubliette that... that uh, yeah. Can you explain that? I mean, I read it. I read it again. I'm like, I think I know what this is. Is the whole floor, comme une oubliette, c'est, c'est quand tout le plan, like the whole floor just... Ruh, 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 ruh. It's okay. Right. I think Looney Tunes. Right. That, right. I had, that's what I had trouble with. I, I think this is what Fleming is describing, but like my brain couldn't process it. I don't know. It sounded, it sounded a little too Looney Tunes-like. I don't know if they truly existed in the way they described, but I, it's plausible they had things like that to trap people. Mm. But more, more, more often than not, they must have been conceived to kill people, not to trap them. Well, this one doesn't 
kill him, but something very important happens. He gets, I think, the 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 the, the fall uh, causes he uh, he hurts his head. Yeah, on the fall with uh, during the fall or at the end of the fall. <laughs> what am I saying? He gets knocked out. He injures his head, his cuckoo, which will become important later on in the story. And he, uh, when he wakes up, um, he, uh, he, I think he's been stripped of his equipment. Yeah, he's he's in. Is he in the living room where uh, Shatterhand is on the mantelpiece with the sword and Bunt is sitting down, or is he? Or is the? I can't remember what comes. Yes, yeah, because the geyser torture scene is uh, later. He, yeah. he brings them there. Yeah. So they they, they interrogate him. The uh, the and, and that's when. Uh, Bunt, uh, she has a, like a revelation. She's like, "Oh my God, it's it's the Englander." No, the so s- s- I, I love them saying Englander. I don't know, it amuses me. Uh, Sir, the man who pr- pr- who posed as Il- Sir Hilary Blair, it's uh, James Bond. We killed his wife. Mm. And, and Blofeld is, I'm excuse me, Sh- well, I, if, if Bunt is saying it's Sir Hilary Bray, then we obviously know Shatterhand is Blofeld. So Blofeld is like, yeah, there is a resemblance. Uh, oh, by the way, we forgot to mention, Bond has this <laughs> little card on him That's saying that he's deaf and dumb. How would a deaf and dumb person make it that far? I don't know how that's supposed to help him, but... <laughs> I, 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 well, yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, the, it's, it's... They they know they are dealing with somebody dangerous, but the I don't know why. I, I, I honestly, I'm I'm a super villain. Uh, somebody like same situation. I would just boom, you kill the guy. Mm. He's there. He shouldn't be there. Oh, but we have Whether something much more fun in store. Yeah, I know. We get to test if this person really is deaf and dumb. So by doing that, we're going to have him sit on this chair. It, 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 I felt this brought me back to Casino Royale because there's yes. a hole in the chair. And it's underneath, I keep saying geyser, although it, for all intents and purposes, it's kind of a geyser, but the word Fleming uses is something different. Um, essentially, this whole land is resting on an area that sort of has some sort so volcanic. of volcanic activity. So there's you know excessively hot mud that shoots out of these geysers, and there's this one in particular... And this is where we sort of get into the, like almost, not sci-fi, but like the, the cray-cray Fleming... You know, they, they built this chamber where they can interrogate their captives and, and they, they have this chair. They actually dug a little deeper in the ground so the hot mud can shoot up and it shoots out every 12 minutes, every 15, 15 minutes. 15. Yeah. And so and if they have a regulator, which is yeah. super important. Super important. Yep. And they say, well, if you're really deaf and dumb, then you can't hear or word, hear, understand a word I'm saying and you will remain seated and die in about 12 to 15 minutes from now. Um so Bond waits until the last minute and he gets up and he's like, eh, it's me. Mm. And he really announces himself like, you bloody bastard. Yeah. And he's still like kind of chill about the entire ordeal. He does, he's not like, you killed my wife. He doesn't Harrison, Harrison Ford, you killed my wife, the uh, one-armed man. That, it crossed my mind but it didn't really bother me that much. Oh, it doesn't bother me. I think it's uh, badass. The yeah, guy, the guy that you're dealing with the, uh, the the guy who killed your wife, but you're not showing that it affected you. And the other guy's like, ah, you haven't broken you. No, I'm okay. Like that's that that makes that should make the man the the man who killed your wife nervous because mm. like if he's that cool under pressure. Uh, I, I, I'm in trouble. Cool, despite the heat in the room. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, they beat him up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And they knock him on the head. So he's already injured his head. They knock him on the head, which again will be important later on. That's um, Yeah, and then, but Blofeld, so they have a discussion where Blofeld is trying to kind of, kind of, Make sense of what he's been doing as as the, as the proper villains should do. He monologues, and this is where I realized that Blofeld has lost a step, and he makes a, a comment that that he kind of lost a step. He's he's insane. Like before, he he was okay. He's always been insane, but competent, and now now because the the entire the entire uh, castle of death as is not a plot to 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 take over the world or no. 
uh, get the no it's just his retirement home <laughs> he's lo- he's lost it and in case this one doesn't work apparently they've already started planning where they might set up a similar thing elsewhere in the world i feel like him and bunt talk about that for and a brief the, moment uh, it's, uh, no but it's bad shit it, 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 and, and he talks about all oh, the like the world should be glad all uh, the, 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 the he makes it sound like he's a humanitarian that he wants the disarmament and yes exactly he brings up thunderball that was for disarmament. He brings up uh, majesties. Oh, England was, you know, f- wasting away anyways. And he brings up what he's doing now. I'd say, but they're killing you themselves all the time. They love their had a kitty. Uh, I'm giving it to them for free. Yeah, you know, I'm so, doing yeah. a service. So I'm like, I'm, I'm a good. Like it's the great villains think of themselves as the hero, and they think they are doing a service mm. to the world. There, which may be. Well, here's a question for you. Um, does that therefore make this third version of Blofeld in the books the more compelling one, the more f- the fullest one? Um, to be la- th- th- revealed at a later date when we <laughs> do our Blofeld special episode. Uh, but it, th- th- uh, he's not, there's a little. Bit, there's maybe a little bit more meat on the bones. This there's time. A, he, he talk, It's the first time that. Bond as James Bond and Blofeld, yeah, it's true. As Blofeld yeah. talk to each other because yeah. before the, the in the in Thunderball they never they meet. meet. In in the Majesties, they're they, both pretending to be different people. Yeah, and this book, their the masks are off, and it's mm-hmm. like like the, book three, man. Book three. end of the book th- book three. <laughs> that that's weird. It's a weird trilogy. They call it the uh, the Specter or the Blofeld trilogy, and it's weird. It's like. Mm. Spectre almost ceases to exist after book number. Is it number. mentioned in this book? I think it's, it's mentioned, mentioned in almost off passing yeah. as, as something that does not exist anymore. Yeah, maybe. Um, so it's gonna be yeah. It's, 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 it's a particularly strange confrontation. But eventually, uh, Blofeld is planning to uh, take away uh, Bond's head uh, with his katana. Yeah, Blofeld's really into the whole shining armor and swords thing well well, actually he is because when he he walks in his garden he's wearing the armor now he's wearing a black kimono with a golden dragon on it he thinks of himself uh, as a samurai yeah yeah, it's like you're completely the opposite of what a samurai can't remember if a decapitation is honorable or dishonorable I remember. Usually, the uh, you 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 got yourself, and there's somebody to cut off your head mm. uh, if because uh, uh, if you don't, it's super painful. Mm. Mm. Um, but charming. Bond grabs a pole and he starts fighting. He, he, well, he goes for Burma first. Yeah, he knocks Bur- uh, Bunt out straight away, and he fights Blofeld. At first, it, 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 like. Yeah, man, Blofeld's a fighter. Yeah, he's, he's a fighter. He's, this isn't Telly. I mean, this isn't uh, Donald here. Then, you know, is... six three, and he's still. He, it's a brutal fight. The way it's described, it's it's brutal. But after a while, Bond it just overpowers him, and it's not pretty. When he kill, finally kills him, it's not. It's not it chokes him. Like it just. It's almost reads uh, the, like the fight um, in. Um, in the train in in the, in the film version of from Russia with love it's not pretty mm. it's dirty mm. it's mm. Yeah, elbows and, and he starts uttering die Blofeld die, die. die. Blofeld. that's see. where like it's like now that I finally finally really have you you die you mother effer like die yeah. like, that he's now he's like letting loose so he's really crushing his throat and Blofeld uh, is finally done with dead yeah mourou um, so, but he, then Bunt is still like uh, semi conscious. Uh, yeah, his head is really throbbing right now. Yeah, he's not, severely injured. Yeah, uh, he's not good. I'm sure some of that adrenaline is a little bit uh, is going away right now, now, now that he's killed Blofeld. So maybe I think he's starting to f- probably feel that pain even more because when you're so jacked up, I think sometimes you don't pay attention to the pain. Your, your body's hurting, but. You're so jacked up on adrenaline, your body, you don't really pay attention to it somehow, some way. Now that Blofeld's dead, that head is like really starting to throb. It's getting really bad. It's, yeah, it's not, he's not doing well. Um, he sabotages the, the, the controlled box of the Yeah, he goes back to the, <laughs> the handle and he sends it to the danger. Yeah, he, fl- <laughs> he puts it to danger mode 
and makes a way. There's there's a, a balloon. I I think it's a weather balloon or something. Yeah, apparently. If, yeah, that's the wit. That you know, that's the balloon to me is the 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 jetpack from the Thunderball film. It's like, yeah, they say there's a message on it telling passerbys, you know, don't come here, but everybody shows up there to kill themselves anyways. That's not important. Bond's going to use this to escape. Yeah. <laughs> Castle explodes. Bond is knocked into the sea and it, it looks like he's not going to make it, but Kissy arrives. Yeah. Well, Kissy every night, well, she said every night, I think this only happened over the course of one night, but she says that, you know, she's going to show up for a couple of hours just so I can be near you, even if I can't help you. And good thing, because she finds him she, in the water. She, she needs her. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's, like, at, at first he tries to tr- strangle her because he's, he's completely, his brain is blech, mush right now. Uh, and she, she finally takes him home, uh, her home, him home, uh, to her home, I guess. Mm. He, she takes him to a, to her home. Something's something's a little weird, though. Something's wrong. Mm. Mm. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> uh, your name is uh, Taro Todokori. And, uh, you're we, my lover. You're my lover. You're a fisherman. Yeah. Um, I, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she's not the best nurse uh, let's nope. just say that's you know, nope. oh my god it's not really cool what she does to him but she 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 saved his life and it does put i still like the character but it does put a nasty little spin on her it's like that's not a very nice thing to do <laughs> That's actually quite mean. It's quite mean. It's it's almost like uh, it's 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 some, it's some type of abuse. Yeah, I, she's been very sweet, and I, she genuinely likes him. She's certainly not doing it out of malice, but that's like the apex of selfishness. It's like misery. Yeah, yeah, like, pretty, like, pretty much, pretty like, much. You know, I'm gonna help you, and then complete. You're keep gonna, you to completely to myself. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> my boy toy. So uh, at, f- at first it looks like James Bond is m- m- dead because uh, people have been looking for him. People haven't haven't been able to find his. Uh, How they get the priest and the 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 counselor or whatever to agree to this? I, I like two days ago it was like you're gonna stay here for like a weekend and then get out. Why do they agree to? I have no idea, <laughs> but that part doesn't make any sense to me. But she she gets what she wants. Uh, I mean. Um, she, 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 they, 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 the, the England doesn't, er, they never finds uh, Bond's body, but he's declared dead. We actually read his uh, obituary. obituary. Yeah. Tiger, it's, Tiger, Tiger and Dicko are mentioned. We don't actually physically see them, but it's mentioned that they tried to, they, they came, came looking for him. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's mentioned that they, uh, the, the Dicko gets the magic 44. Uh, mm. probably most, Total afterthought at this point. Yeah. Every everyone like it's there's it's it's a weird ending. I'm first, reading I'm reading this going like what's Magic Forty Four? Because <laughs> <laughs> it feels like this could be the last book. Like the the James Bond dies. What a reborn. hell of a way to end the franchise, huh? In in his own way, he gets a happy ending. I mean. He could, like they could have said, oh, well, Bond lived the rest of his life uh, as a Japanese fisherman, raised a child, and never I don't came. Understand. There's just some things that don't make any sense to me. First of all, the, the the priests and the higher ups didn't want to have anything to do with him. They very reluctantly agreed for him to stay for a while and a short while at that. Now it seems now it's all cool beans. The other thing I don't understand is well, he doesn't speak any Japanese. So how does this story that Kissy's telling him, well, you're my lover. We've been fishing for a while. Like how does that make any sense if he doesn't understand the language? Like there's a lot about it that doesn't hold any water yeah. at all. Speaking of water, fishermen. But no, it's just like I get it's. It, on an emotional level, because we've spent 12 books with this character, and especially since what happened in the previous book and how it ended specifically, like, it, it does put the character in a very interesting, a legitimately interesting emotional state, but there's zero logic behind any of this. It's it's weird, but I I do enjoy, like, as much as I, they, it could have ended like that, I do enjoy 
how it ends because he hears that the, the word in Russian Vladivostok mm. it jigs a, mm-hmm. a memory and he's like oh it's important Russia is important I need to go to mm. Russia Wait, and, which is f- a funny way to bring him well he's not Brock bad yet but it's a funny way to uh, lay a spark because we really haven't been dealing with the Russians very much recently no, yeah we true. haven't dealt with the b- Russians for like four books five books it's true but I what I enjoyed is that he, uh, James uh, uh, at the end of the story, Jane Bond's, James Bond, in a way, goes to hell. He goes to Russia, and that's for him. That's that's a, almost like a death sentence. So he's going to hell. Well, hell it, hath frozen over, I suppose. There, there's a there's a metaphorical aspect to the fact that the uh, the, 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 the his identity of James Bond is resurfacing, but it it's dragging him mm. to 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 his pos- Where potential it belongs. death. Well, potential death. I mean. Mm. The, the Russians are more than likely going to identify him and brain damage or not, man. You, you're yeah, James we'll probably Bond. never see James again. I mean, the first thing they'll do clearly is execute him. Yeah. So but, no, it was a good last book, though. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, uh, I think we're done. Yeah, well, there's a little uh, offhand. Oh. Speaking of things offhand, oh, uh, Kissy's uh, pregnant. pregnant. She's prego, little bun in the oven. And that's a... A, tra- a trail that other writers pick up on. I've, I've, I've not read that book, but I know I, of I it. I know it comes back to. I was, I was about to say haunt him. You can edit that out. Well, I actually don't have to. Um, I know I think it's, that topic comes back, but I haven't read that book. Isn't the uh, no? It's called the blast from the past. I think the, the that. Are book? you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I might be mistaken. I, might mistake and I, I haven't know. read it, so I don't know which one it is. We but, have uh, quite a few. I don't even know if it's a Garner or a Benson, to be honest um, with you. I'm pretty sure that's a Benson. It sounds like something Benson. It does not sound like something Garner would do. It sounds like something Benson would do. Having read a few of them from both, it sounds like a Benson uh, thing. You have more experience than I do. In, so. Anyways, we'll get there when we get, get there, there, which will be in like 2030. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah. I th- 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 final impression, I Final impressions, I honest to God, other than I liked it, I, I'm struggling to sort of come up with a, a succinct uh, conclusion to my own personal thoughts on this one. It's certainly very interesting. It's, it's very, very travelogue heavy, but that doesn't mean it's boring. Um, it has a really strange ending which eh, doesn't really have a whole lot of logic to it, but it certainly sets the character on an interesting path. So I, I'm not really criticizing any that much. Um, Dicko and Tiger are great characters. Um, I, I love as bizarre as it is, but you know, the garden of death, we've seen weird things before we've battled voodoo. Yeah. Uh, we've discovered a, 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 a sleeper Nazi that, build a rocket that's going to destroy England or London at least. Um, you know, a, a Korean that eats cats and is unkillable. Like we've seen weird things before. We, we seen, it fits. Honestly, I love this book. I don't know if it's going to be where it's going to land when we, whenever we, we do that bomb, it's, it's coming. So when we do uh, pretty soon, our tally of uh, the books and how the release is coming soon. We only got two more. We record once a month. We only got two more months of flying. So I guess, February, I think for... Well, next month is December. We'll probably be doing Golden Gun. Uh, and then for the new year, we'll be doing Octopus in the Living Daylights. So uh, for oh, our... February, one, yeah. I, I enjoyed it, but there's... there It needs a little bit more polishing. I think it's a, it goes too much into travelogue uh, at it's some point. long, though. It's barely 200 pages. Barely 200 pages. It could have... Eh, streamlined, streamlined. But I... Do enjoy the Guardian of Death? Honestly, the Guardian of Death. It, 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 there's a lot of this book that seems like Doctor No. Doctor No, no and You Only Live Twice are the, the, structure-wise, our structure more or less hmm. the same, hmm. and that's why I used it as a template to uh, write my synopsis. Interesting. I see where you came from there. On now, yeah, interesting. But I enjoy Doctor No, so I'm, I'm I'm still enjoying this one. Yeah. Um, I love the Guardian of Death. I mean, there's a lot of things they, they didn't use met much thing much. Most of the things that are in the book are not used in the movie, so that entire book could be recycled. You don't. Oh, yeah. The, the plot has been is virgin has not been touched. Pretty much. Uh, most of the characters, Dick Winderson could be recycled. 
um so yeah uh, it's, it's gonna be it's, it's it's a good book uh it'll be interesting to see how where i'm gonna rate it uh Mm, mm. but it's been it's been you know we still have one novel and one collection of short stories to go but i find i was thinking about this the other day where i sort of look at the franchise because there are 14 books in two halves books one through seven and then books eight through um 14, 14. And we're at book in in the in the back end the back half we're at book five and it's been a very different experience book books one through seven Notwithstanding a couple details here or there, like how commercial with love starts, you see the bad guys mostly. It's basically just mission, office, mission, office, mission, office. This back end, uh, a book where the main character was a 20-year-old girl. Yeah. Uh, a book where we introduce a recurring evil organization and, and baddie. A book where he gets married and loses his wife. Uh, and, and a book where, um, and a book where we that's extremely travelogue heavy in a very, very, very different type of location we've ever seen before. Nineteen early late fifties, early sixties Japan. So that's, it, this back end has been very Bondian, but also very different from the, the, from, the, the from the first half. I think Fleming is a different man when he wrote those later books. I mm. think the success of the the character. Made it so that he, I think he struggles with a plot. That's why I seeing a lot of Doctor No in this book. Interesting. All right, but so still, we both enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. Well, as we've been doing for the past few books, since we've already, uh, thanks to your research and and your attention to detail, we've already gone through you know births and major events of of many of the years we've been talking about recently. So, we're actually going back to the book titled James Bond: The Man in His World, written by Henry Chancellor. And we're basically going to take a quick look at um, basically what the readers thought of the book. You only have mm-hmm. twice and what the critics thought of the book. <laughs> Keeping in mind that, you know, I've actually never read these passages before. So I, as you, Matthew, and you, the listeners, are, are hearing these, I'm, I'm reading them for the first <laughs> time. So Is, is so there an alternate uh, title sometimes that uh, they, they have? Uh... I know. You keep asking that. I can <laughs> never spot it. It's not can... all of them. Uh, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do. Not that I can tell. Is this, should it be in its own little section? Or? I don't know. I, I, the, the only one I remember is that uh, Moonraker had the alternate title of uh, Mondays are Hell or Mondays from Hell, something like that. <laughs> okay. So what else, What did the readers or the... Oh, funnily enough, there's only one reader quote oh, this okay. time. We're, we're going to have a lot of critics, though. Um, I'll try to get through them quickly. So what the readers said. Mm-hmm. At times, it is as difficult to stop reading as if one had accidentally walked off a cliff. Is that good or bad? At times, it is as difficult to stop reading as if one had accidentally walked off a cliff. Now, that's either it's so good, it's like falling off the cliff and it's too late and you can't stop, or it's so terrible that you want to kill yourself. Speaking of killing yourself. Oh. oh. Is that what that's getting at? I think. It's a little subtle. We'll see what the, the, the critics said. Oh, what, what the critics said. So this is the Sunday Times. England's best export, a spice of adventure, a dash of patriotism, laced with sex, sadism, and expense account know-how. This is from Cyril Connolly, Sunday Times. Reactionary, sentimental, square, the Bond image flails in its its way through the middle-brow masses, a relaxation to the great, a stimulus to the humble, the only common denominator between Kennedy and Oswald. I, I, it sounds positive. I don't know. These are funny ways to write critics. Yeah. But anyways, this is from The Spectator. I noticed that Ian Fleming has taken a hint from films of his books and is now inclined to send himself up. I am not at all sure that he is wise. This is from the Belfast Telegraph. He is still in a class by himself. This is from The Times. Through Mr. Fleming's macabre imagination is as interesting as ever. Some of the old snap seems to be gone. This is from Peter Duval Smith, the Financial Times. We want a Stendhal or a Conrad of the spy age, even if that means ditching James, now that he's a big boy. 
Okay. <laughs> These are weird passages. Yeah. Uh, Robert Fulford, McLean's Magazine, that's from Toronto. Oh. Uh, our friends in Toronto. Uh, the characteristic which makes Fleming appear so silly also helps to make him popular. His moral simplicity. When we read James Bond, we know whose side we are on, why we are on that side, and why we are certain to win. In the real world, this is no longer possible. Sounds pretty an interesting way of saying you liked it, I think. <laughs> and finally, uh, Malcolm Muggeridge from Esquire. You Only Live Twice has a decidedly perfunctory air. Bond can only manage to sleep with his Japanese girl with the aid of color pornography. His drinking seems somehow desperate, and the horrors are too absurd to horrify. It's all rather a muddle, and scarcely in, tradi in the tradition of Secret Service fiction. Perhaps the earlier novels are better. If so, I shall never know, having no intention of reading any of them. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, turn off. That's uh So mixed bag. Yeah, mixed, mixed bag. bag. Even, I... even the positive ones are like... Yeah, I guess that's positive. But even I, I, we both enjoyed it, but we're we're not like Google Gaga over it. It's uh, it's like I, I I don't recall ever saying the words Google Gaga once in this. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes, so uh, I think that's a wrap. It is a wrap, uh, save for our social media platforms, which we always love encouraging our listeners to to visit. We have people everywhere. We got to go with that from now on. <laughs> So we have the www.thejamesbondcomplex.com, which also functions as a Tumblr account. Yes. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Search for The James Bond Complex. Lots of people have searched for us, I noticed. We have a Twitter account, at The Bond Complex. An Instagram account for the visual artists in you. Uh, search for at The James Bond Complex. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe. Click on the thumbs up cartoon. Uh, search for at, not at, just search for the James Bond Complex on YouTube. Uh, we, you may search and listen to us at the Google Play Store. Mm -hmm. Can you Google that? I can Google that. Speaking oh. of going Google Gaga, I'll go Google Gaga for us. <laughs> uh, just search for the James Bond Complex. And being an Apple man myself, I strongly urge any and all of you to obviously uh, search, uh, subscribe, review, and give us a glowing Golden Gun five-star review at, on, on iTunes. It helps in the search engine algorithms or whatnot. We're on Twitter individually. I'm at uh, double O pop. That's double the word double underscore oh underscore pop. I'm at Matt Claire with two T's. Please don't forget it. And uh, just as James Bond is always one to return, so too with the James Bond complex with 1967's film adaptation, kind of, of You Only Live Twice. Partial. <laughs> Inspirated, in inspired by the name of the book. The book. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Toujours un plaisir. À la prochaine. Au revoir.